Hello, today I wanted to talk about getting started with a text editor. So text editor is where you're gonna do most of your coding, um, also writing, I do all my LaTeX work here. And so you wanna get really familiar, it's worth spending some time getting really familiar with some of the features that you can use. Uh, here I'm using VS Code, Visual Studio Code, um, but I'm gonna be talking fairly generically, whatever any modern text editor is gonna have uh, the type of features that I'm gonna be uh, highlighting today. So I'm just gonna open up some code here, um, just as an example. Okay. Sorry. This one here, uh, okay, so here's some code. It doesn't really, you don't need to understand anything about what's going on here. Just wanna highlight some things that, that you might do. Um, you're gonna spend a lot of time here, so it's helpful to learn some keyboard shortcuts. So here's some common ones that I use a lot. One is uh, say a multi-cursor. So let's say um, for all of these lines here, I needed to add something in front of them. So I can do this multi-cursor and I'm, I won't actually say the key bindings because they might be different on your operating system. And I've also changed some of these based on past text editors that I've used that I've become accustomed to, but uh, you can look up multi-cursor and I'll show you a cheat sheet here at the end. But let's say I needed to multiply all of these things by alpha, right? I could go in, line by line and do that and then do a copy, right, a copy, I messed that up, but copy and a paste, but that's gonna get really annoying, right? Um, I can uh, also select things. So let's say I wanted to get rid of all of those. So I'm just gonna select all of those and delete them. Or let's say I needed to change everything that uh, was Delta, I'm gonna call it uh, Beta instead, right? So I can, change multiple things at once. And even if I'm doing, that's a multiple uh, multiple select kind of thing. And in fact, I can skip over some instances of them. So notice I selected all of them except for, you can see my mouse, this one here. So I'm just changing them to beta two, for example. Um, with multi-cursor, I could move over. So let's say, let's say I wanted to change all of those plus and minuses here uh, to multiply or I could copy and paste things. So let's say I wanted to take whatever was here and multiply it here on the end, right? So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, it's pretty powerful as you get used to it. I can move lines up and down. Of course, I can copy and paste things, but often let's say this line needed to occur earlier, or I needed all three of these to occur later here. I can move those around. Uh, I can easily copy lines. So let's say uh, this line didn't exist. I knew I needed to do this two more times. I can copy those lines and then go in and edit the parts that I need. I can delete lines. So let's say I don't need these anymore. I quickly get rid of those. Um, block commenting. So maybe I want to comment that part out. Uh, I want to block indent this or unindent. Um, going to the beginning and end of lines, of course, and also hopping over what I guess would call words or variables here, uh, just navigating through. Um, Jumping into functions is something that's really useful. Uh, this is going to be kind of silly because it's just right here. But well, two things here. You can see I've, I'm getting IntelliSense, meaning it's uh, predicting what I want to put here. And because it's, I have a code package that I'll show you, it's telling me something about this, like what the signature looks like, what the documentation looks like. And as I go to fill this in, it's telling me what kind of arguments it's expecting. But anyway, let's say as will normally happen, I've got a big project and, and I wanna see what's inside this function here. If I go over it and I can go inside of it and notice it took my cursor up here. And of course, this is a silly one because it's just right there, but it could be in some other file. I might not even have that file open, but as long as it's something that uh, you know is in the path of this code or whatever, it can go find it, take me there. And that's very convenient as I've got a lot of functions and files. Um, so there are way more. Uh, let me just pull up here a cheat sheet. So this is um, this is for a Mac, but you can download one for your operating system. And like I said, I'm not necessarily using these exact same defaults. You can change these, uh, uh, but and and you don't want you don't need to know all of these. But I'd go through here, and if there's things that you use often, it's helpful to learn them um, because you know anything that you're going to do repeatedly, if you can do this faster and really helps you as you're coding a lot to spend a little time on these things. Okay, so most modern text editors are gonna have a function called like a command palette or something. So this is something that's like a universal, um, 
uh, search bar, if you will. So it's got all the commands that are available to me and I can just start typing things. So I could find things perhaps in the menus somewhere or in the sub menus, but this is just available to me. The more, you know, I'm at the keyboard. So the more I can just be at the keyboard, you know, within reason and not to my mouse, I can, I can be faster here. And, and I may not remember where things are or what they're called, but as I search, I can usually do this much better. So for example, uh, once you download this, you probably want to install some extensions. So I just started typing that and I'm going to come over here and I can search. So let's say I wanted to install uh, extension for the Julia language, which I'm using here, which I've already got installed. Otherwise there'd be an install button here. So I could do that. Or I would do, let's say LaTeX. I use LaTeX Workshop, works really nicely. Or for Python, let's say I want to install this package. So here you can see as I delete that, Here's some things I have installed, just the ones I talked about, um, some things for Jupyter Notebooks, um, a theme, and yeah, other minor things. And this is just modifying my key bindings because I used Sublime Text Editor for a while. But anyway, so extensions are a good thing to look at. Um, there are many, many, many extensions for all sorts of things that you might want to do. I talked about setting keyboard shortcuts. So we could open that and you can see all these different commands and what the shortcut is. And I could filter that and say, oh, I want the command for Julia to, uh, let's say I want to run a single line and I can see, oh, here's the keyboard shortcut I did for that. And I can double click that or click this edit thing here and put in a new keyboard shortcut, right? To set something that, that I want. So uh, another thing I can do is snippets. So again, I'm going to open up that command palette and type snippets. Let's configure user snippets. And uh, mainly I've got a few here for LaTeX. Uh, I don't really have many, I don't have any for Julia, but for example, for LaTeX, I wanna create a figure. So let me just create a temporary LaTeX file here. So if I wanted to create a figure, I just type FIG here. That's the keyword I put and press enter. And it fills out a bunch of stuff for me. And it's also put my cursor I want. So I could say, I figure it was called awesome and put a caption. This is my awesome figure, right? And then I tab to the end here and that's all defined here. So notice I put a uh, dollar sign one in these two places because I wanted the cursor to be in the same place there. And then dollar sign two is where I tab next. Anyway, you can go read up on that, but this saves a lot of time when I have kind of these boilerplate things. Some languages are gonna have things that are a little bit verbose and um, you just wanna be able to fill that in quickly. Um, another thing I can do is diffs. Uh, let's say I've got this file and I wanted to compare it to another file. Um, and in this file, I had made some changes. Let's say I had uh, uh, gotten rid of these lines here and I had uh, changed all my cues to Z's for some reason. And, except for that last one, because I just didn't do it. And I added this line here that said uh, Z plus equals five or something like that, right? And I want to compare these. So I can go again to my command palette here and search uh, compare. And there's a few options, but I'm just going to go to this compare active file with and select uh, this other file. And now it's going to give me a diff. And so I can see, okay, this line is different from that one. I added that. Looks like I deleted some lines here. And then I can see it's highlighted this character. I've changed the Z's to Q's. Um, this is especially helpful with Git. I won't go over this here, but you could set this to be your default diff command with Git. We'll talk about Git another time. Um, but yeah, there's Git integration. I, I tend to do, I'm used to doing Git from the command line, so I don't use it, but you could do all the Git stuff from here if you wanted. Um, speaking of keyboard shortcuts, this is not specific to the text editor, but you, it helps to get to know them for your operating system too, right? Opening, closing files, creating new files, and so on. I really find it helpful to have uh, um, a program that can help me snap windows somewhere. So I want to move this to the left. I put code side by side with maybe a documentation or something, or go back to full screen when I open up an integrated terminal or whatever. So being able to move those things around is very helpful. Um, and then from the command line, all of these text editors, you should be able to execute from the command line. So I've mapped mine to edit. I think the default is code uh, here, but I've set it to edit because I've changed text editors, you know, half dozen times over 
over the years. And so I just want to keep the same command, but I can edit and I could edit a specific file or I could edit uh, in a new window and I could say, just open up this window or I can do a, a diff and so on and put two files. Maybe it's two dashes. I don't remember. Anyway, um, I use that a lot as I'm going from the terminal because I want to open up this folder. And if I open up that folder, then, then I can do like a, well, let me just do it here. Let's just, uh, I think I have this one already open somewhere. So I'm going to open up a different window. Let's say I wanted to open up this one. Um, I don't know. Edit.n, and, and then it opens up all the things here. And I could have the files that are, actually, this is a bad choice because this is just folders. Let's go into, let's say, CC Blade. Let's say I just want to, uh, yeah, let's go there. Open that up. And then I can see uh, all the files that are here, and I can open those up and go to a different file, for example, that's in that folder. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to cover uh, with the text editor. Again, um, as the caution I gave with figures, you can, this is a classic productivity trap. You could spend forever tweaking the fonts and the style and the colors and your shortcuts and your snippets. So don't spend forever, but do spend some time, you know, and you don't have to learn all the shortcuts at once, but as you find yourself doing something, go look it up, reinforce that shortcut and use it. Uh, you'll find it'll save you a lot of time in the long run um, for those things that you use a lot. And you'll slowly over time build up more shortcuts.